Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. I think we can, uh, let me pull up my other screen. Call the meeting to order. It is uh, 12.02 p.m. And special meeting of the Moorhead City Council on November 13th, 2020. And I believe the <clears throat> items, one second here, I'm trying to think. Did I uh, did I miss? Did I get? Did we get sent a uh, like a a document? It would have just been um, on the website. Okay. One moment, because I didn't yeah. have a PDF reader. Yeah, and I apologize. I'd just gotten the final county documents yesterday, so it did it was uploaded a little bit later than we normally would. No worries. I just want to make sure I have it here. All right. All right, well, Madam Clerk, let's uh, get a roll call, please. Shelley Dahlquist. Here. Sarah Watson Curry. Here. Shelly Carlson. Here. Heidi Durand. Here. Deb White. Here. Larry Seldervold. Here. Chuck Hendrickson. Here. Steve Lindos. Here. And Mayor Jonathan Judd. Here. And can we please uh, stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, divisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you, folks. And then we'll move on, I think, uh, for the administration <clears throat> items, though we are here to canvas uh, the results of the November 3rd, 2020 election. I do believe there is one other matter that we're adding to the agenda. And this is regarding the discussion regarding the city manager search. And I will turn that over to Attorney Shockley when we get to that point. So I think the, where we're at right now is that we need to canvas the results portion. And with that, City Manager Molly or City Clerk Rust, is there anything else to add to that item? Um, the only thing we, so we got the final results from the county. So we, again, are just canvassing those. And then at some point I will need original um, wet signatures. So whether that is, again, there's no definitive timeline on it because we have the resolution that we're passing. Um, so I'll be looking to each of you at some point to stop and sign, or I can swing by and sign. So, but again, no rush on that. Okay. All right. So then I think at this point, we just need a motion to approve. So moved, uh, that point. Duran, second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, before we take this roll call vote, and I do apologize, Madam City Clerk, do we need to do a roll call for those that are present? Um, we, in addition call, to the roll call that we just did, sorry. Oh, my bad. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. My apologies, folks. Anyhow, we'll move with the roll call vote on this item. All right. <laughs> uh, Dahlquist? <laughs> yes. Watson Curry? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Durand? Yep. White? Yes. Seljavold? Aye. 
Hendrickson. Aye. Lindos. Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. So then we'll move on to uh, the next item, which is the update on the uh, city manager search. Uh, Tony Shockley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. We have, we don't know if we have an action item for the council today. We wanted to provide an update. Uh, as you're probably all aware, the increasing number of COVID cases in Clay County and Cass County are causing a number of issues with respect to how we conduct the process of the interviews for the candidates. I think I'll address the low hanging fruit first of all. Um, given that it would probably not be advisable to have the entire council in a, the same room with a candidate from out of state, uh, what we are proposing to do would be to have a partial in-person and a partial virtual interview with the candidates. So like with most of our uh, council meetings where the city clerk, myself and the mayor and chambers would propose to have those same three with the candidate at the table in the front and then the rest of the council would be conducting the interview. So it'd be both virtual and in person. Uh, that seems like, it seemed like that would be the most appropriate result because with, and Amy would be present also uh, because we're limited to the, the 10 people. And so just with the council, council and the mayor, you have nine. So it seemed like the most advisable way to handle the actual interviews of the candidates. And I don't know if the council is okay with that. Uh, yes, I, I'm uh, the, the second issue leading up to that is that normally we would have uh, a tour of the community with uh, maybe the mayor or some other people from City Hall uh, in speaking with Amy. Uh, we thought it would be advisable just to have one person uh, give the tour to each of the candidates to minimize the contact. And so Derek LaPointe has agreed to be the provider of the tour around the community. Just want to make sure that you're all okay with that. Uh, then prior to the uh, actual interview with the council, uh, we had intended to have an ELT meeting. Uh, and meet and greet with uh, the candidates. Given the restrictions on the number of people and the high uh, positivity rate, uh, we're proposing to do that just through a virtual um, virtual setting, uh, if that's okay with the candidate. And uh, I'm seeing head nods to everything. Uh, the, la the last issue is probably the most substantive issue, uh, the committee, the subcommittee had talked about having uh, community involvement and a uh, community meet and greet. Uh, in years past, we've actually had the candidate at a large event at Yumcom Center uh, or, or some other event uh, meet members of the public. Clearly, that's not an option right now. Uh, we'd also discuss the possibility of perhaps having the uh, MSUM host uh, a virtual meet and greet with the candidate. That no longer seems to be a possibility. Uh, and uh, given the, the stress that is on the computer system systems and the time for people to try to organize meet and greets, uh, we're not really seeing an opportunity to have a virtual meet and greet because we don't have a good platform to set it up on. Typically, we have, tried, we have tried to have another platform outside of the city because of HR issues to conduct those meet and greets. And so we're not really seeing a good, good option for a meet and greet from the, the public. Uh, so uh, I know the, the mayor had reached out to MSUM and might have a comment, a few comments about uh, their ability to hold that a virtual one-on-one, -on -one, but that doesn't seem to be a possibility. And so just uh, wanted to get some input from the council. If if you wanted us to try to set up a virtual meet and greet, or if you just wanted to forego the meet and greet. 
I can chat, uh, chime in just to uh, 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 Councilmember Lindos point. Yeah, it was in state. Um, we don't have the uh, the uh, capacity to do it, and so I think the thought process. If uh, I just think that it it's going to be very very tough to ask an external uh, an external party to try to do this at any point, uh, whether it's to pick it up now, um, and uh, even at the time that this was discussed, uh, the original thought. Um, that I had was to have NBA uh, try to sponsor it. And again, they don't have the capacity. And you know, what would it look like? How many people do you open it up to getting it promoted? Things of that nature. Um, it would be, I would say, it would be a pretty big deal for folks to try to pull this off. Um, we, we put together a, a, a program at uh, M State regarding uh, Native American Heritage Month. And literally, we're still trying to figure out how we sorted that all out. Uh, this is a pretty big deal. So if anybody feels like they wish to take this on um, and try to get a, a outside entity to do that, more than welcome. I, I uh, Blessings to the person who thinks that, they, uh, that that entity may be able to pull this off. With that being said, the thought that I had, and uh, I think another person shared this, is that uh, with the 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 interviews will be public anyway, um, and that if people who are watching uh, will be able to watch and see the interviews and uh, see the candidates in action, maybe there could be, and I'm sure that there will be some public uh, comment that comes after that. That might be the best way to get that uh, that public feedback, but I think having and hosting an actual uh, meet and greet during the process, I don't know how it would be feasible, but I'm open to hear what anyone else has to say. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there was a, a quick question about why the city wouldn't host uh, this type of event. Uh, the reason that the city has not hosted these types of events in the past are due to HR issues. Uh, the city is the potential employer, and when you have meet and greets and uh, the availability of questions, uncontrolled questions from third parties, you can have questions that could potentially violate uh, the uh, requirements of conducting fair and impartial uh, interviews. And as such, uh, the city has avoided hosting those and instead had a third party host them uh, where that allows pu the public to ask more broad based questions that may not be acceptable for an employer to, to ask. And so th that's why it has always been handled by exterior third party. Uh, I can tell you from a legal and an HR standpoint, uh, we both have concerns about if the city tried to host such an event because at such a point, the city as the potential employer would have to filter and perhaps reject some questions that were asked by the public, which causes transparency issues and, and concerns from the public. And so our, our preference and recommendation is to have a third party conduct that meet and greet, whether it's uh, virtual or in a traditional setting that it would be uh, in person in, in the future. Does that bring about any uh, questions or comments from council? Because this is your time to discuss it. Uh, council member Lindos, I see has a hand up and then council member White. So um, I guess two thoughts. One, um, having uh, the, um, you know, candidates be able to present or 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 have a, a ten minute. You know, we talked about having a, a, a chance for them to actually lay out a you know a, a little conversation with with people in the city. You know, uh, a, a statement, but a little more than a statement, and then be able to take questions would be really beneficial. Um, you know, if yeah, I don't, I don't know if if you can't do the Q and A. Um, which is another question, um, maybe um, Council Member White might get to this too. Um, it would still be useful to have the candidates have some sort of 
recorded, you know, presentation. Um, you know, I thought we, as a subgroup, we came up with with a pretty nice um, idea. Um, and I don't know, I, I, I don't want to say that MSUM could do it, but setting up a Zoom webinar is, is very straightforward. And if I had four people, um, we could easily have a Q&A you know, session. Um, um, I, I would feel like I don't want to be the one in charge. I, I could be, the, I could be help facilitate that just because of my role in the city. Um, but I, I certainly, it, it's, you know, again, I don't know, and, and I might be totally, you, it might be something you already asked, and they said, no, we can't do it for these reasons, and those same men state reasons would apply for MSUM, uh, but it, it, I know we have the capacity to run large webinars um, at M state, uh, MSUM, I'm sorry. I'm going to let Deb talk. Yeah, I White. similar things, and I, you know, I just really value the opportunity for community input and transparency, and, you know, I think, you know, um, I'd rather make us make the extra effort to see if there would be ways it's possible. And, you know, a couple of thoughts um, beyond even what, what council member Lindas mentioned would be if we did host it, could we, you know, if we are clear at the beginning, here are the things that um, we're, you know, that you're able to ask questions about, but there are certain things that, that we would not be able to have the candidates address. And so if you are clear with those parameters ahead of time, if your concern is that, you know, somebody might ask a question and then you don't allow that question to be asked. If you tell them ahead of time, here's the things that um, are, uh, you know, areas that can't be discussed, then I, you know, I would think that people could understand why if they then sent a question that tied into that, that it couldn't be discussed. But so I, you know, I think that would there be a way of still allowing it and being clear with people that there are certain things that the candidates could not discuss. Um, in lieu of that, you know, yeah, if there was a way, it wouldn't be an exchange, but if the candidates could give some kind of a presentation and then citizens could give input, you know, just give their, give their input, just to have an opportunity for community input, I think that would be valuable. But, um, and I agree even, you know, if there uh, was an opportunity to reach out to MSUM, and see if they would host it, but I, you know, I, I would just, I'd rather see us to make sure that we're really doing everything we can to have citizen input. So I'll, I'll just jump in and uh, if the city were to host it, what I would recommend is in addition to that list of questions that can't be answered, we would need them to submit either th through chat what their proposed question is and then somebody at the city would have to decide if that's an appropriate question to ask because you wouldn't necessarily want to give somebody a platform where they could ask uh, an inappropriate question they could say well i understand that but i'm going to ask you know what religion you are which is clearly out of bounds so council member carlson and then i want to after council member carlson's done i would like to have um i i don't want to i want to have also, Amy uh, Sedergren addressed whether or not HR has the capacity as well as our IT uh, to take this on. And Council Member Limbos, I think since uh, if th this is important, and I'm not saying that it shouldn't be done, but you will have to probably lead uh, the, uh, uh, if this is something that folks think that we should do, you can be the conduit to uh, talk with uh, MSUM, uh, your entity, to see if this can work and whether or not they have the capacity uh, to move forward. So with that, we'll pass it over to Council Member Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say I'm really uncomfortable with the city being um, any part of hosting this event. Um, as you've stated in the past, it's always been third party entities. Um, so if MSUM is willing to host and they're able to pull it together in the next four days with a weekend in there, I'm I am 100% on board for that. I know some of the discussion that we had on the um, kind of screening committee was, um, was it going to be limited to how many people on, um, you know, if there's 1200 people on a Zoom call, does MSU have that capability? And then how do you weed through the questions and who would be in charge of that? Um, who would be in charge of asking the questions would the candidates both be asked 
the same question and the candidates are both then um, answering the question um, or is it candidate one has a half an hour and candidate two has the second half an hour. I think if we are going to be approaching MSUM, I think that those things would need to be decided. So we have those parameters to give to MSUM, um, but logistically, I think we, we struggled um, even in the interview committee on how that would be done. Um, and I, I really am strongly against having the city be involved too much in that posting and in the facilitation and everything like that. I also think it's important to bring up that council member Hendrickson had, had mentioned and, and uh, council member Duran might want to chime in here too, since you both have the experience of going through this process that when they had the in-person meet and greets, the candidates actually ended up getting cornered um, and really only talked to a few members of the community during in-person meet and greets. So before we turn it over to council member Lindas and White to approach MSUM, I guess my proposal would be that we have these specific parameters in place. So let me, uh, before, so Amy, if you can hold off just one moment, uh, we'll let uh, uh, council member Watson Curry, and if there's any council that wish to chime in, uh, we can get that. And I uh, just want to make sure that uh, we have uh, Ms. Sedergren on standby to see whether or not we even have the capacity to do this uh, in four days, and then we'll go from there. So, Council Member Watson Curry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I wonder if the library could be of any assistance. Um, they manage both programming and book talks. Um, through their legacy program, so they might possibly have the infrastructure and knowledge. Um, that's one possibility. I was also thinking potentially the League of Women Voters, but that seems a bit outside their realm. And um, as a volunteer run organization, that seems like a bit extreme to task with. Um, to pull back, I did have one other question too. We do have a candidate from out of state, and I just was very curious about their comfort level traveling at this point. So if there is if there is a 100% virtual option, just given the state of where we're at with um, high percentage of infection and community spread. So I know that's not in line with this current dialogue, but I just wanted to express that um, concern and, and accommodation if that needs to be made. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Watson Curry. Uh, before we hand it over to uh, Ms. Sedergren, is there anyone else from the council uh, that, that has any uh, Thoughts or comments they wish to make on what has already been spoken. Council Member Uh More public uh, uh, access television. They had a black box theater at one time. Can't they set something up? People call in or just have a set a bunch of questions, and we broadcast. It gets broadcast at time that this interview or presentation is going to be made at a certain time, and so. I mean, you have to have you have to have cable television, but you also have to have you have to have Wi-Fi, and you have to have computer hookups. So you're you're going to hit most of the people. Option. Okay. Anybody else from council wish to be heard on this? So I'll make sure we're not talking in circles here for the next half an hour. Let's get right. uh, council member. I, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand, Chuck. Let me do this. Uh, let's do Councilmember Durand, the Councilmember Hendrickson, and Councilmember White because you've already spoken on this, and then go back to that. So, Councilmember Durand and Hendrickson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I I tend to uh, agree with Councilmember Carlson. Um, if MSUM thinks that they could get it done, you know, I within the parameters, go for it. Um, I also think it's important, like what Council Member Watson Curry said, um, you know, is this individual comfortable coming in state? Um, have we reached out and, and spoke with that person to see if, if their interest has changed or if there is a concern there or, or and whatnot? Um, otherwise, you know, and, and uh, Council Member Seltravold's idea is, is pretty good too. I don't know if, if it's logistically possible, but it, it's definitely um, an interesting idea. 
um, I, I understand why some people are, are feel it is very, very important to get community involvement. Um, it's it's just it's so unfortunate that it's during this time of COVID um, when we're seeing spiking rates increase and it's really just unfortunate timing. Um, but we want to do our due diligence and make sure we, we're keeping everybody safe and everybody at home uh, as much as possible. Um, those are just those are those are my thoughts. Oh, I, I would add. The I, I do believe strongly in, in a, you know, Chuck and I have experienced this. We've gone through this uh, before that the community members who are very passionate will make their voices known somehow in some way, shape or form. They will email us, they will call us, they will do something to make sure that we hear them. So, <clears throat> you know, like, you know, last time the meet and greets, yeah, the, the, the candidates, they, they did tend to get cornered and, and, and con I don't wanna say confronted because that's not the right word, but um, they, their time did seem to be monopolized by, you know, by a handful. Um, so, you know, let's keep that in our minds too, because if, if we're thinking this is, we want this to be a huge community event, I don't know that that would be that big. I think it would probably be the individuals that, you know, consistently, consistently make, you know, make their opinions and their concerns and, you know, let us know how they're feeling. Um, so yeah, anyways, I'm done now. Those, those are my, my few thoughts. Thank you, Councilmember Duran. Councilmember Hendrickson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. For first thing, I am not driving. I was en route to my office and uh, ran out of time, so I just I'm taking this call in my car. So just to put that to bed real quick. Uh, second thing, I agree with uh, Councilmember Carlson and Councilmember Duran about everything they said. Um, my one question: We have, I mean, and I'm not, I, I you know, if. Uh, MSUM wants to take this on and they can pull it off. That'd be great. But I mean, we have four days. How are we supposed to get the word out to the community? Um, you know, just you know, just how are we, how are we going to get people involved or what? What would be? I don't want to say marketing aspect of it, but how would we contact people? Would you put it on the website? Because to me, um, people are really busy. Even though it's a pandemic, people are busy right now. So I'm just wondering, you know, what what we could do to get this out. So that's all I have. Councilmember White. Um, trying to think how to say it. So I just, I again want to reiterate, I think some form of community engagement is very important. Whether, and I don't, I'm not wedded to one particular kind type. I think it's, it's unfortunate that at this point, it maybe is too late for us to try to get an outside party to do it. Um, but I just think that there's a real value in that. And, and I, um, and in particular, actually, Heidi, I really appreciated your comments. And I think this is another reminder of trying to make sure that we're not just getting the voices of the, the big players. We know that there are certain people that already, they know the system, they, they know how to engage with us. But how might we do it in a way that we could reach out to, you know, to get other people's voices? So again, even if it was something like a presentation that we, put up there and allow citizens to give feedback and we could spread the word within the community about it and allow people to get feedback so that those of you on the search committee could see that. But um, just the opportunity to you know, continue to send that message that we value our citizens input and um, their voice matters. So I just, you know, I, I really I, I would be troubled if we completely eliminate any opportunity for that in the process. For, uh, I, uh, for that, um, I think for those, and again, I think we all would agree with that. Um, the issue is I, what I think the committee needs to hear are solutions. I mean, I think, and, and I think Council Member Seljavold did a really good job of pointing out a potential solution. But 
we can't just speak just in the cloud of what we like to see and why it's important. I don't think any single person on here would disagree, but I think we need to hear what solutions and what people individually can help out with. I mean, I just I was a on the team to put together um, a, a short one hour lunch and learn at M State for Native American Heritage Month. And we had two weeks to, pre to prepare for this. And little did I know with only two people trying to put this thing together, how much work it goes into putting in a one hour filmed presentation. And that's why I'm saying for those of you that if you want to reach out to MSUM, and this is two weeks it took together to put together a one hour presentation. So if you think that, I mean, having, I've gone through it and I know that we don't have the capacity and I can, and, and I'm more than willing to share you why it, it was very time, time consuming. So for folks, I agree that this is important. We're past that point. We all agree that there should be some public engagement. The question is, do we have the capacity individually uh, to make this work? So with that, I wanna be sure that Ms. Sedergren, because we don't want to put this all on her and that's not fair. Um, so I want to make sure that one, what is HR's role and whether or not HR has capacity. And we also should include uh, Chris Raddy and I don't want to put him on the spot because this isn't necessarily going to be on him. And we have to follow the procedures legally that attorney Shockley has outlined and not compromise this process by putting us all on the city. So with that, I'll reach out to Ms. Sedergren uh, for any feedback and be as candid as, as you uh, can be regarding whether or not you have the capacity or your office has the capacity to make this work. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, there would be obviously some concerns because uh, the HR department is currently pretty stressed, pretty taxed right now because of not only just our normal things of open enrollment, but Mondays and Sundays going into Mondays are very taxing and because of COVID. It is our biggest day for COVID calls, new quarantines, new uh, testings that pretty much the HR generalist, it's all day long that she just does COVID calls on Mondays. Um, and they've become now to a point that I then uh, am reaching out to the directors because of it. So we, we are very taxed. I don't know if I could you know, make it happen. Obviously, IT would play an important role in it. And I know that they have been very busy too. Um, but due to some other things that occurred this week, we lost some time in regards to preparation overall for this um, with Baker Tilly that's doing the background that I need to get some data together for all of you that that was going to be today and weekend's project. Um, so I am a bit concerned about it. Could we make it? I mean, I'll make whatever we need to make happen, but I, I worry that it just might not be at the level it really maybe should be. And I would worry about what that would look to people of not having a professional, um, you know, event to occur. And obviously what uh, John Shockley discussed in regards to the concerns, those are real concerns that we have in regards to uh, liabilities and, and so forth. So that is a very big concern for me, but if we wanted to move forward and find a way, it would be, can we execute that properly? Um, in regards to the question about if the candidate would want to participate 100% virtually, today I was going to give them a call after whatever decisions was made about the changes. I have already spoken to the candidate from out of town. They, they had already got their airfare and is coming. I, I was going to then reach out to them about these changes and I can certainly ask them in regards to their comfort level if they would rather do a, a virtual if that is something. Um, any questions? That's kind of all I have right now. No, I appreciate what? you sharing and for your candid uh, uh, comments because here's the thing, folks. We're in the middle of a pandemic. There's health concerns. There's legal concerns, and we want to have a fair process. So we just can't throw things on a wall and hope that they stick. I mean, this is unprecedented times, and we all and collectively have a lot going on. And and I mean, um, I get it. I think we all get it. Uh, but I think we want to make sure that we're not just throwing this process together so that it's compromised and it's not professional. Um, I know that I'm looking at what I have here. 
Uh, Ms. Sedergren, is there a way to create a, okay, wait, I'm, there's a bunch of things going on here. Is there a way to, okay, there's a question about creating a survey to collect questions or comments to share with the candidates, council, and again, and then another idea is if people are uh, going to be able to watch the meetings as they occur, could we allow folks to submit their input based on what they see during uh, the meetings, being that they're going to be live streamed? How about that? Uh, so I think Chris Raddy could probably talk more to about how the process, we, but I would assume that we could do something there. It looks like uh, we had set aside from about noon to 2.30 for deliberations. Certainly after the interviews are done, we could be bringing those comments in for the group to look at and consider. Um, I don't know if you'd want to delay decision making unless you needed more information. John uh, Shockley could probably report to that more, but it is best to try to make that decision as soon as possible. But at least if you got that initial feedback for those who chose to watch, it might be a, a good alternative. Okay, so then with that, uh, Mr. Addy, we don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, what are your initial thoughts based on all the robust conversation that you've been hearing so far? Uh, we can certainly live stream the meeting next week and on YouTube. Uh, YouTube does have a, an option to allow comments on the live streams. We could collect those. Um, unfortunately, there's no way to ensure that those individuals are more at residents or have their identity. Um, we could also have a, a form on our website that uh, they could fill out and they could ask more detailed questions about residency and identity and so, uh, collect that at the same time. Um, I know there was comments about MSUM and other entities. I um, do know several of the IT staff at MSUM. I could contact them and see about their capacity to handle that also. Um, but if you were uh, going down to live streaming, uh, we, could, we could certainly make that work next week. And Chris, I and and I do just on a you know uh, on this note to be sure, uh, does your office have the capacity to do this? Because I, again, I want to be conscientious. Because now, if we're if we're doing this, this is kind of putting you and your office in a time sensitive situation too. So, I mean, what are your candid thoughts on that? And just be honest about it, man. Sure. Um, setting up the live stream is not a big deal. That's we're essentially turning it like a standard city council meeting, and so it's just the the time to sit there and and uh, you know like an, another council meeting. Uh, so we can certainly make that work. Um, collecting the input from the the public, you know, it, it would depend on how detailed and complicated that. Yes, but it, it essentially could be a website form that one of our developers could set up in an hour or so. It, it, I don't see that being a, 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 that difficult or time consuming. It's certainly feasible to do in the time frame. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, the only uh, question I'm reading now is uh, the for the candidates to be given a prompt in a recorded 10 minute presentation that will be available uh, for the public. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's going to be a, uh, that's an open question. Uh, I think I'll probably direct it to uh, Ms. Settergren, uh, your thoughts on that. Um, I guess I, I'm not fully understanding it. Would it be where we ask them a, a question? Do they record an answer that we just make available? Um, because uh, depending upon what it is that they would be speaking about, I guess the the questions being asked at the interview are are very probing questions that I think will will elicit good responses. And those are really good questions. I think that will help uh, help people understand more than anything else that I can think of. But, Maybe I'm not understanding it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh because remember Linda, where that's uh your question, what where, where to uh, specific, specify where you're going. So so I guess one of the one of the aspects of this is um you know trying to 
figure out what is actually doable and what might be uh, attainable in, in, the, in the future. But what we'd like to do is get residents to be able to um, uh, have questions or, or give input. Um, as I understand it, our interview process is going to be live streamed, but it's not going to be recorded. Is that true? True, and uh, John Shockley would probably speak more to this, but I would probably shy very much away from during your your interview with the candidate of allowing public to ask questions because that would really open us up to some liability issues. Right. No, and that's not what I'm saying. So, so oh, okay. I'm my, my feeling my feeling was you could give a prompt, and I don't want to I don't want to start um, saying what that prompt would be, but essentially we talked about in the subcommittee having the candidates an op op opportunity to have a ten minute statement slash presentation that could be recorded um, by them or we could actually have the city record that we could put that up on the website along with that web form that that chris's team is putting together and and invite um people from the community to basically give feedback but also then to watch this the, this live stream um so to me that that would that would help with the transparency aspect is what i'm looking at i, I would like to be able to introduce these candidates to our public and have them be able to, you know, put their best fo foot forward, so to speak. And then, and so that would be part of if you were to then actually have the ability to have um, a, a webinar at MSUM um, or some other location that then could allow them to do that same aspect and then have questions that would flow in. Uh, but, you know, they could be separate. So if we can't get the MSUM to do a webinar, you could still have the candidates have a statement that is available for the public to see and invite um, comments or questions. Um, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Oh, I was just going to ask um, Council Member Lindas, who would then be monitoring the questions asked? So there's two processes to this. The, the first is having a presentation would be, there would be no Q and A for a presentation. It would just be something recorded you put up on, on and it's like, you know, meet the candidates. And, and here's a form for you to give um, input. Here's also when the presentation, or sorry, when the you know, interviews are gonna have um, take place, you can, you can tune in, watch them and give more comments. Um, if you were to then have a webinar at MSUM, the, the the there would have to be a team of four people that would be um, filtering or not filter filtering sounding a little bit weird but be looking at the questions and then asking those repeating them so the questions wouldn't be asked by by people they would be submitted uh, much like uh, you know uh, at debates that i've gone to where people submit questions and then someone someone reads the questions from the audience and so right now if that's even possible um, you know, one, I think the MSUM is the capacity, but does MSUM want to? I mean, uh, the, the administration has to actually sign off on them. It's, um, I can't go rogue and just create a webinar. Um, I think I might get in trouble. Would they be able to? I mean, it's Friday afternoon, um, and this would occur on Tuesday night? Tuesday night. So, Logistically, do you think MSUM could get, you could get the permission from them and those IT folks could put it together? I'm, I'm assuming they would have to work on the weekends. I don't know if they are able to do that or they want to do that, that they could put it together. <laughs> Basically, it'd have to be put together in a day. If they gave me permission, I could create a webinar in five minutes. And and I have I you know I I again I don't want to be the one um, uh, being the front face of it but if you have four or five people um, working behind the scenes the biggest issue is people have to know how to work as a team on 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 facilitating webinars so that you don't have um, mistakes happen um, but other than that it's it's a very straightforward to set up it is straightforward but I think you'll figure out as I have. Oh. Put oh, together absolutely. something, but you'll you'll figure it out. But but I think I think in theory you're absolutely correct, Councilmember Lindos. But I think again in 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 working with this dynamic, and I don't want and I want to be 
Council Member Douglas, okay, I didn't see your hand up, but uh, Liz, it will, uh, you have a question. I, know what. I was just going to say um, pretty much the same thing that way back at the beginning is that, that the people um, have already been sending in emails and I think um, they do not need to be asking questions just like we're not going to be asking questions. They'll already have the questions to answer and they can watch those questions being answered and from those they can email us. Uh, and tell us or give us their input. And I think they're just going to have to trust us to choose um, the city manager and listen to what what they email to us. I don't think we need to have something that involved in this short of time. It could just really blow up. I'd rather go safe route. Thank you uh, for your feedback, Councilmember Dahlquist. Councilmember White. Chart just saying, listening to everything, I I would say the webinar it seems uh, untenable. So I would be fine if we moved off of that. And I think in my thought, the the question would be, there's one opportunity of having people watch the um, meetings and submit input. And then Councilmember Linda said, in addition to that, what if we had the candidates record something, an introduction of themselves? The citizens could watch that. They could watch the um, meetings, and they could submit input. So, in my opinion, those would be the you know I would um, look at deciding between those two because I just as much as the webinar thing sounds great, and I wish we were doing it, it just doesn't sound like it's possible, it's feasible at this time. This is Councilmember Duran. I uh, Deb, I I would agree that the with the importance of like some type of an introduction. I think that is very important. Um, and then if, if we're already recorded, if those, if the meeting is already recorded, I, I think putting that up there for people to watch is pretty simple, pretty clear cut. And then, yeah, if, if they want, if people want to reach out, telephone, email, um, I, I think that shows that we're doing what we can without making it too complicated. And Keeping it as simple and safe as possible, I, you know, if that's attainable, if that's doable, and if it's you know relatively easy from Amy's point of view and from Chris's point of view, um, I would support that. Okay, folks. So it's twelve fifty, and I want to be respectful of people's time. I'm not sure if we have a consensus or not, but we're gonna to have to get one in the next 10 minutes. So I guess, and speaking of uh, transparency and openness, what I would probably say to do as well, um, Ms. Sedegren is out of fairness to the second uh, candidate uh, that is coming up here, uh, we should probably alert that candidate that this is out for uh, that, that person to see because obviously it is a public meeting and anyone can attend, but I wanna make sure that uh, they are aware that this conversation is taking place before they arrive, uh, as we obviously have another candidate sitting here. So I wanna make sure that this is open and available for them to watch. So we're, we're all being fair in this process. So with that being said, where are we at folks? What are we looking at doing? Um, and what is the wishes of the council and getting a consensus of what we need to do so that Ms. Suttergren uh, and or uh, Mr. Raddy can move forward. Council Member Watson Curry. Thank you. Um, just in the interest, so there, you've all heard KISS, keep it simple, stupid, but I think at this moment it's keep, keep it simple and safe. So, <laughs> um, we are already getting emails. Would it be possible? I just, I know my inbox is a disaster. It would be great to have just a, a point where any comments about this particular topic can go so everyone is assured that they've seen it and have a chance to read it. That's just my only concern. Um, you do have to dig a little bit to contact uh, Mayor and Council, and if we could just make a really simple collect all or any sort of public comments, that would simplify it. 
um, and make it a little bit more accessible. So that's my suggestion. Thank you, Councilmember Watson Curry. Um, anyone else? Uh, can we kind of get a hand of anyone that wants to kind of? I, I think what generally what I'm hearing is there may or may not be a webinar. Uh, can can folks give some sort of element of affirmative, negative, if if that's still on the table or no? I don't. I don't support a webinar. Mr. Mayor. Mayor Chuck, I think if we try to do a webinar, it just gives it seem rushed to the public, so I'm not supporting that either. Okay, so I got three. I see a thumbs down. Anyone else? I see another one, another one, another one. All I'm right. fine not doing a webinar. But I, I like the kiss. Keep it safe and simple. Okay. Um, I would really like to have some way that the public can see how to give input on on the front page or something um, uh, to invite more people because um, I think what's already been said is some people know how to how the system works and then there's an awful lot that don't um, and I understand it might be difficult to get a, you know, 10 minute video introduction of each candidate that we can also put up there. But if that was possible, I think that would be very good. Okay. Um, okay. So what, what, what do folks feel about that? Please give your input. I see a thumbs up. Two, three. I'm four, good with that. But all right. So we got that down. Okay. And so that'll make the process more transparent and equitable. That's good. All right. So we got those two things resolved. Is there anything else that we're missing? Because I want to be sure to give Ms. Sedergren and uh, both candidates fair access to the, so that they know what's coming and what their expectations are. Are we missing anything else, folks? Okay, no, thank you. I mean, this has been a good a good conversation. I think a lot has came out of it. I just wanna make sure that we're sensitive to the folks that have to do the work. <laughs> um, and also uh, for the candidate that's uh, that, that's taking valuable time coming up here uh, that they are well aware of what they're getting into. So, um, so Ms. Sedergren, if you could follow up and, and send or, you know, at least make available uh, to that person this this uh, special meeting, and then uh, do we have any thing? I'll get to your question here. I can't remember Carlson in just a second, but Miss uh, Sedergren, City Attorney Shockley, um, is there anything else that we need to be concerned with from a legal aspect based on what the council has established by consensus? Are we missing anything? I don't think so. Um, I think we've covered most of it. I think we've got a pretty good understanding of it that we will do the uh, department gathering, the candidate tours, the interview, all as kind of planned, except for now virtual. And then um, I can work on the idea of the 10 minute presentation. My only concern is, is obviously Mr. Kramer being that he flies in on Monday. I don't know how quickly that could be done, um, but. I'll have to find out what time flies in and stuff on Monday. No, that's yeah. cool. And since again, to be fair and equitable, uh, as soon as possible, uh, that uh, that the uh, out, of, out of town candidate can have access to what was discussed, the better. Um, so everybody's on the same page. That would be great. Um, and I think I'm I'm reading here. So Councilman Carlson, the 10 minute presentation. I think we got that figured out. An introduction with experience, vision, ideas, goals, um, and presenting what we want them to present on. Oh good lord. Do when and available where for how long we'll have uh Ms. Sedergren work on that. Vision for Moorhead. Okay. So, so we got an idea where I think where 
council has some ideas about what the introduction should consist of in the substantive portion, vision, ideas, goals, and we'll let the set of grant work on the do and of how it will be available. So, um, Attorney Shockley, are we missing anything? No, I think I think you've captured everything, and uh, Amy and I can hand uh, take the intent of the council and move forward with the information provided today. Okay. All right, folks. No, appreciate the conversation. Is there anything else that we need to cover that we might have missed? Does everyone feel comfortable moving forward with what we discussed? Seeing head nods. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, great, folks. Thanks again for the input. Um, and uh, we really appreciate the conversation. And if, unless there's anything else that we need to discuss, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Deb White. Second, Shelly Elquist. All right, folks, we are adjourned. Have a healthy and safe weekend. Thank you again. Thank <laughs> you.